Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to build your own custom computer from choosing your components, through the building process, and then into installing your operating system. Now most people think that building your own computer is a very difficult thing to do. However, it really is quite simple. With this video, I hope to show you how to avoid the common beginner mistakes and to make the process go very smoothly. When you decide you want to build your own computer, the first thing to keep in mind is budget. Now, you don't have to spend $2,500 on a computer. You can build a computer for about as little as $1,200, and you can even build budget builds as low as about $600. It's all about choosing the components and doing it wisely. Now, when it's time to start choosing your components, the first things you should keep in mind are your processor and your motherboard. Both of these are very important on each other, and they depend on each other. Not every processor goes with every motherboard. Now it's very important to keep that in mind because it's a very common beginner mistake. It can be a very costly one. Now when you first begin building your computer, there are two things to keep in mind. One, I would suggest buying all of your parts at once. Don't buy one and then a week later buy some other stuff. Buy it all at once, that way you can keep your budget perfectly on track and you know everything you're getting at that time. Now another very important step is just pick your processor and your motherboard first. And your other components in your computer are also very dependent on your motherboard. When you're first going and shopping for your components, it's very easily to be intimidated. There are up to thousands of different combinations of different parts that you can get. It's very important to keep them all compatible. Now when you have a motherboard in mind, it's very important to check the specifics of the motherboard. In this case, check the CPU. Here we can see it's an LGA 1155 socket type and will support those type of processors. Now we can check the RAM. Here you can see how much RAM your motherboard can support and the maximum clock speed. Now there are different types of RAM out there. In this case it supports DDR3 RAM at 1333 or 1066 hertz. Now in this case you can save money by not buying the 1600 hertz RAM because it will not work to its fullest extent on this motherboard. Now we check the graphics. Now most processors today do provide integrated graphics and that means you don't need a dedicated video card. Now while that's good for your everyday common things, if you're looking to get into hardcore gaming you're going to need to get a dedicated graphics card. Now if you're not looking to get a dedicated graphics card then make sure that the motherboard and the processor that you're getting both offer dedicated graphics. It's also worth noting that if you're getting a dedicated graphics card, all the ports you see below, such as the HDMI and the DVI, you are not going to be using those. You are going to use the outputs that are on the video card. Okay, now we can check the expansion slots. Here we can see the PCI, the 2.0 times 16 slot. That is what you're going to use for most graphics cards today. You can also see that there are other PCI slots which you can use for expansion things, such as, you know, extra USB ports, an internal wireless card, etc. Alright, now it's time to start looking for a hard drive. It's time to look at the storage parts of your motherboard. It's not worth getting a hard drive that can transfer at 6 gigabits per second if your motherboard doesn't support that. And also, if you plan on having separate hard drives, you have to make sure you have enough SATA ports for those hard drives. Now, if you're worried about choosing the wrong processor for your motherboard, most motherboard websites will have a full list of every processor that they support. So you can double check that list to make sure you're getting the right processor for that motherboard. Alright, so we have all the parts laid out here. We got the processor, the hard drive, the optical drive, the RAM, the extra fan, the power supply, and of course the motherboard. Now I'm giving you a guide to follow, you don't necessarily have to do it in this order. So when you have your case out, you simply put on your I.O. shield, and that's where all the ports on your motherboard are. So you take your motherboard, and you're just going to simply drop it into place. Now it's important that you have it built on standoffs. This case, for example, has standoffs built in. A standoff is a little rising on the surface of the case that prevents the motherboard from lying directly on the case, which prevents it from shorting out causing damage. So line your motherboard, uh, all the outputs with the I.O. shield. And you're also going to line it up with all the screw holes on there. Now you're going to start screwing them in. You don't have to do it very tightly. You don't want to, you know, torque it and cause damage to the board. And as you can see, you can see the standoff there, how it's risen above the surface of the case. So now comes the CPU installation. It is important to not touch either side of the CPU and only grab it by its side. 
So on the motherboard, just simply open up the socket as so, pull out the little protective surface, and there you can see all the pins. Those are extremely sensitive and very important. One damaged pin could be very catastrophic to your computer. So now take your processor by grabbing each side, match it up with the way it's supposed to go. The Intel have little notches on the sides that link it up, and you're just gonna drop it into place lightly. Put no insertion force whatsoever on the CPU. Then, just close the bracket here. You might have to put a little bit of force in to close that, and then just lock it into place. Now here we have the fan that came with the processor. On the fan that already came with the CPU, the thermal paste is already applied. Now if you're buying an aftermarket fan, you're going to have to buy a tube of thermal paste and apply that manually. Uh, if you're going to be doing things such as overclocking, it's advised that you buy a better fan, also known as an aftermarket fan. The fans all have different instructions and they all come with a manual, so just follow the instructions that you're given. And then you're just going to plug it into uh, the fan port on the motherboard. It will be clearly labeled as CPU fan. And make sure the wire does not get in the way of the fan, just tuck it into place. So now we have the RAM installation. Uh, RAM is probably one of the more easier things to install. It has an off-center notch, so it can only go one way, and you're just going to drop it into place. Now on the motherboard, it shows you which way you're supposed to go. On these, you can see there's two different colors. There's the black and the blue. Uh, the black is known as A1 and A2, and the blue is B1, B2. You can check your motherboard manual to make sure you're doing the RAM installation correctly, because all motherboards are generally different. Uh, the Asus ones, however, should all follow this similar platform. So you're going to push down the RAM, lock it into place, and there you go. There's the RAM. Now, almost every case is kind of a different way to install the graphics card. But the, generally speaking, this is how you do it. You're going to take the graphics card out of its protective bag or out of its box, wherever you have it. You're going to want to make sure you're not touching any of the components of the graphics card. So here we're just kind of grabbing it by the, uh, the uh, case side and the sides. And then you're just going to gently rock it kind of back and forth evenly into its port, the PCI 2.0 times 16 slot. You're going to match it up with the uh, opening on your case. Match it up with the notch, it can only go one way. And then just kind of push it in evenly to make sure it goes properly in place. And then lock it on the back there. You're then going to screw it onto the side of the case so it fits in there very securely. So that way it won't rock back and forth. Now most cases come with fans already attached, but it doesn't hurt to have more fans. In this case, we're installing a fan on the back here. Generally speaking, just follow the arrows on the fan. It will show you the airflow on it. And then just screw it properly into place and make sure you have a good airflow through your case. Now cases have things on the front panel, such as USB ports, the on-off switch, headphones, and stereo jacks. Those should be properly marked, and you can just plug those in as so on your motherboard. It's important to follow the motherboard manual to make sure you know where to plug them in. It's also important that you plan ahead of time on how you're going to organize this case. In this case, we didn't really plan on the lack of room on the back because of the graphics card. So it was a little bit difficult to plug it in. Alright, so next we have the power supply. It's one of the big behemoths. There are two types of power supplies. There's modular and non-modular. The goal of a modular power supply is to let you choose which cords you're going to plug in so you're not having all these cords in your case. You can also install the power supply depending on the case, either on the top or bottom. All cases are different. You're simply going to screw it in just like a fan. And then you're going to start simply matching up all the ports in the power supply with those in your case. Uh, it's important to follow, again, the motherboard's manual for where things are supposed to plug in properly. Now we're going to plug in our optical drive. You can usually plug it in from the front or the back, it doesn't matter. And much like the power supplier, it's going to screw it right in place. On both sides, there should be four screws. Next, we have our hard drive. And much like the optical driver, it's going to slide it into its proper slot and then screw it into place. Now, I'm not giving a full introduction on how to do all of your cabling. A lot of that's going to be on your own. should be on the manuals with all the items that you get. But generally speaking, it's all going to be from the motherboard and to various places. The final step for building your computer is going to be cable management. 
Uh, I highly recommend you get some zip ties and just start tying things down. A lot of cases and power supplies come with some zip ties. And finally comes your first run. It's a little bit of superstition to leave the side panel off to see if it'll boot. And now you're just waiting to see for a splash screen, a boot screen, and there we are. That means everything is working properly. Um, it, granted, you just don't have an operating system, so say no OS found or no device found. But there you go, you have your computer built and you are ready to start installing your operating system. So again, this is more so of a guide to follow. You don't have to follow this completely. Um, some people, they like to build their full computer, all their motherboard components outside first to see if it'll boot. That relieves a lot of pain if something doesn't work and you have to take it all out again to see you know, what's not working properly. So, as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you want me to do a full tutorial on how to build a computer, you can just leave a comment for that as well.